So with that, let's get to the last obligatory video of this week's lecture, um, strings and format strings. You work with strings all the time, so just give me a few examples of how you can nicely render them and what you can do with them. First of all, some string operations. So these three operations, strip, split, and join, are the ones I really use all the time. So strip removes white spaces at the beginning and at the end of a string. So if we call this on hello, and then look at the new string, it removes the white spaces here. Okay, so white spaces are uh, spaces tabs and new lines and um, but what we could also do so it's not an a as we see here but we could also for example provide the strip method what it's supposed to strip so in this case it now strips away the a i could um, provide a new argument for um what is what else i want to strip but i can also for example change it now i first strip the a and then i strip these spaces okay um there's also R strip and L strip if you want to only strip from the left and the right. And if you get data from other people, like so often they are just white space around it. And this is why, for example, two strings you want to compare and think are equal are actually not equal. Using strip is really useful. Okay, then there's split, which splits the string into multiple parts and returns a list that's also really, really nice. And if you're working with data sets, this is how you are just with strings or want to tokenize the sentences or something. This is what you would do. And then the reverse operation of split is join. Join is also a string method. So you call it on some string and then you give it as argument a list. And this basically is the reverse operation to our split here. So it takes the comma and puts this comma it's taking as um, what the method is called on between every element of the list here and its argument. So if I had a dot here, it would put a dot in between. And it's also really nice because it makes sure that um, it doesn't put the comma in the end, so you don't have to care about this. Okay, and more importantly, format strings. How do we nicely render strings? Or how do we nicely render strings? Yeah. So the version zero, basically, you would have if you wouldn't know otherwise, is to basically print. So let's say i equals thirteen, and then we would print i is and then we simply concatenate the stringified version of this. This would work. Actually, if you're only concerned with printing, where the print operator, the print function, doesn't care what arguments it's going to get, so it can just let the print function do this for me. But this is generally not good style. How do we format strings the way we want to have them? The version one, the oldest version, is standard format strings in C style. And for this, the modulo operator is overwritten for strings. So if we write string modulo something, this is how we do format strings. Um, this is how we did it in Python 2. And I'm just showing it because of backwards compatibil compatibility, because you're going to see it in a lot of code probably. So you would do it. So imagine we have an int, a float, and a string. And we have inside a string, we can use the modulo operator, the percent sign, and then with, for example, a D, which stands for decimal, which shows me ints, an F for floats or an S for strings. And then it afterwards you have the um, module operator and then a tuple of your variables. And this will take the first one of these variables and render it at the first position of the percent sign. And how it's going to render depends on this, whatever is the character after this percent sign. So D for integers f for floating point numbers and s for strings. And then there's also additional syntax, for example, if I wanted to have a floating point number with less precision, I could round it by, for example, writing this dot two here. So dot number of digits and then f is a floating point number with a fixed amount of digits next to the dot. We could also provide them in x, hexadecimal representation and so on. So this is, this still exists. If, you, if you're if used to coding C, this is probably what you're using anyway. But in Python, there's actually no real reason to use it anymore besides to not break Python 2 compatibility because this is the way you did in Python 2. But I actually recommend to break Python 2 compatibility everywhere where it's possible because Python 2 is dead and we don't want to encourage people to continue using Python 2. So just don't use it. You know how it works. You can Google C style format string characters or whatever, and you're going to find um, a lot 
more comprehensive list of how to do this, but just don't use it anymore. The newer version implemented in Python 3 is the dot .format. So that's far more powerful than the borrowed C syntax. And if you want to list a list of its argument, here is a list. And for a nice overview, here is a list. OK, and this simply, now we don't have this percent sign than a character as placeholders, but we simply have um, opening and closing curly brackets as placeholders. So we have here the placeholders, and then we call dot .format. And then we provide a list of arguments, where the first of which is going to be put here in the first position, and the second is going to be put in the second position. And that's, so you also have a list of arguments here. It's a really long list, actually. Um, and it also makes a lot of sense. So these placeholders can even be given names to make the order irrelevant. So if we call, if we don't, if we have some name in between here and then provide it as argument dictionary where we map this name inside this curly brackets to some value, this works and makes the order relevant. So we first give it the age and then the name, but obviously it still prints it correctly here. And now we see, for example, another case where Dictionary unpacking is useful. So if we have already a dictionary, a dictionary like this, we can simply unpack it right here. Because what we're doing here is we are basically what we're doing is we're unpacking the dictionary we had anyway. Um, and so this here is the dictionary, and and, the, and then this and then this. So we're unpacking it here and then passing it to the forward function. But let Python unpack it for us. So this is the nicest and smallest syntax to do this. And we see, I didn't define it. We see this is so much more, so much more clear. It doesn't have all the additional information, which you don't need anyway, just clear code. And Python likes clear code, also part of the set of Python. Okay. So, um, like I said, it allows for many formatting options. Look there, and this is, for example, how you could also do it. So we see here, we printed widely justified and then 10 characters long, and we show two decimal places, and we want to display the floating point number. So this is how we would um, do this. So we put inside the curly brackets colon, and then our formatting options, which we have in these lists. OK, and then there's one last version, which came up with Python 3.6. So again, make sure Python 3.6 is rather new. It doesn't work on Raspberry Pis, for example. And that's an F string. And F strings are just the most readable thing ever. OK, so an F string doesn't even need the string dot format, but simply, naturally, you can write variables inside curly brackets. So we've defined a variable somewhere in our code. And then our string is simply defined as something, blah, 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 and then curly bracket, and then the name of the variable or expression, and then closing. And an F string is recognized as an F string if you have the F before that. So if you wouldn't have the F, it would literally print this. But if we have the F, Python makes a special F string out of this. We see even IDEs show that this is an F string and that we that the IDE knows, OK, I'm not printing this, but I'm taking this as a variable. And what's really, really cool is that inside F strings, you can even put expressions, like not variable name, but for example, the literal, I don't know, 12, or even the result of a calculation, like 12 plus or 16 plus 12, or 121. <laughs> And this perfectly works. So this is a really nice and this is the most clear way of how to make sense. So 12 plus 16 equals 12 plus 16. And this is so nice and clear. And we can also, again, um, provide arguments like the width and precision here. So for example, again, we need the colon. And then we provided the width and the precision here with this syntax. Now you may say precision is 4. Yeah, precision is weird. So the precision is this is a precision of one. So it's just after the comma plus two. But yeah. All right, as much for the necessary contents of this week's lecture. I will talk about decorators, but decorators are not necessary because it's a, it doesn't do too much. You don't necessarily need it. I use it sometimes, but not too much as well. And it's just a bit hard to understand if you see it the first time. And it's not that important for that. So I'm leaving it out for now. So as much for this week. Bye bye. See you in the practice.